Wow, Michael, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you as well, too. Where are you located? I'm in, um, well, I'm just west of Denver, Colorado. Oh, man, I love Colorado. I, I got married in 2019, and we were going to go to New Orleans, and a hurricane was brewing, so we went to Manitou Springs. Nice. And that was, man, it's, it's just, oh, my God, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful world up there, so you're lucky. Uh, I live up in Evergreen, which is about a half an hour west of Denver. Okay. So I'm about up in the mountains of like 8,000 feet. So it's Man. just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I bet. Where are you at in relation to Pine, Colorado? Pine is um, kind of south of here. So it's probably half an hour, 45 minutes south. Okay. And it's not up in the mountains. It's kind of in the foothills and in, in, in a little west. Well, we went to a wedding this summer there and it was like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> <laughs> sure. i'm like oh my god i'm just waiting for the film crew and the boom mics and all that so anyway but yeah, yeah it's hey, awesome it's, yeah it's wonderful so it's great to meet you thank you for taking time out before we get into your life as a ceo and brand champion you know we've gone through quite a thing with covid the world's waking up how did you survive it and how has it changed the way that you conduct things now uh talking about business or professional personal professional what do you, what you well, I mean, it, 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 it bleeds into everything. It's that little circle pie yeah, yeah. chart that just comes together. Yeah. We, uh, well, twofold. I mean, it totally disrupted everything, personally and professionally, but professionally, it just co totally changed every single thing. Um, you know, we had an office that we couldn't get into for almost about a year and a half because of restrictions. And so, and it was really frustrating because, we had just signed a lease, just moved in about a month before all the lockdowns happened. And so uh, that completely changed what we thought we were doing with this whole collaborative environment. They're going to be super cool. We're going to have this great loungy area and these collaborative workstations. And then with months, within months, and, and it was awesome. And within months, that whole idea with the lockdowns completely got scrapped. And um, so we had to really, we had to reinvent how we did business like overnight. And so we had to figure out how to really do virtual. We had to figure out how do we bring in only better communications tools? How do we put together better project management tools? How do we put together more of a kind of a uh, cloud-based project management tracking uh, progress and pr tracking everything so because you just couldn't walk across and talk to somebody you'd actually have to so we had to figure out how do we reinvent ourselves but we really pretty much had to redo every single thing we did within a matter of months in order to survive well you know my one of my main vocations is interviewing jazz musicians and they are masters of improv yeah. and business really hardcore business people remind me of that like you have to do this all the time you got to pivot you got to move, you got to get into a better place. So that's almost kind of something you're trained in. Is that kind of a vibe that you go with? It is, but um, that was like, you can't gradual do it. That was right. a. <laughs> Overnight. Like, here you go. Welcome to life. Yeah, you should. We should have gotten this done a couple months ago. And now we got to get it done by, you know, Friday. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it was full bore and we had to figure it all out and you know not only did we have to figure out how we do business but then financially we, did, we it you know we had a lot of business in the real estate sector and that completely shut down for months and it totally affected us and thank god we had good management our cfo was on top of the ball and had to figure out what are we doing financially what how are we going to survive this what are we going to do um she went out and kind of made all the, did all this research and was very entrepreneurial, very grassroots and very, very agile to figure out what we could do to get some PPP money. What could we do to get some, an EID loan? What could we do to get some ERC tax credits? And I mean, between what we were doing from running the business, but, you know, being able to go out there and check on how do we survive financially? I mean, uh, thank God we had a team that took action and fast action. And that's really the only thing that got us through that, that that's unbelievably challenging time. And I hope to God we never have to go through that again. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get to the essence of exactly what you do. 
Yeah. I'm going to put you hypothetically in front of a bunch of third graders at career day. And one of the kids, <laughs> okay, one of the kids looks up and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? Yeah, um, I tell them we brand companies and that could look like creating a look or feel or a logo or a website, but it's also the um, what we call voice and a tone. So when you read text or you read something or see a social media post or see like a podcast or whatever you see, anything you see visually or uh, verbally or even kind of connects with you emotionally, we help companies put together that brand and their brand story. We also help put together uh, like a, that brand story and what we call a financial story into like a cap raise deck and help them raise money to achieve their goals and objectives. We also put together a, how do we take a company into the marketplace online or in traditional outlets or, and what is that like in, in, into the digital space or social media space? So we help them launch them or take them to market and then we set up a system to be able to track and measure performance and, and ensure that they're hitting their desired outcomes and heading to where they want to be. So when you were in the third grade, what was your dream? What did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, no clue. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We, we no all have clue. our time. Yeah. No, I was just, I was just survive, you know, just living life. All right. So we're going to. We're going to drill down and find an answer. So let's go to your childhood. Where were you born and raised? What were some of these seeds that were put into you to be an entrepreneur, to excel in business? You know, I, I grew up in Carlsbad, California, which is on the coast, about 45 minutes north of San Diego on the coast. So I had a pretty damn good childhood. I mean, we, it would be a couple, about a mile and a half to the beach. So we used to ride our bikes or skateboards down the beach all the time. I tell people that in high school, I, we used to have what we call surf PE. And, and so we would meet down at the beach at like 7.15 in the morning. So we'd have class from like 7.30 to 8.30 surfing or boogie boarding. And then we'd have to go back to school and get there and shower up and get to class by nine. <laughs> um, so it was a little bit different lifestyle. It was pretty damn cool. And uh, when I was a kid, I really didn't know what I want to do, I, I loved that lifestyle as a kid. We hung out at the beach. We I worked at a surf shop all the way through high school and through college. Um, I, I think really I saw my parents struggle during those times. My mom and dad were very uh, middle class, lower middle class, struggling to survive every day, every month. And it, life was hard for them. Life, it wasn't easy for us, but it was... It wasn't hard for us, but it was very middle of the road. And I started working as a kid. Yeah, I don't know how it was, probably 9, 10, 11, delivering newspapers. Yeah. And then I umpired Little League Baseball as like a 11 or 12 year old. And then, you know, I did that for several years. And then um, I had a bunch of even those little little newspaper boy or umpiring little league baseball because you couldn't really work until you're 15, 16, you know? So I did other, those little odd jobs then. And, you know, because our parents back then were like, you guys are going to, you know, you guys are going to work. You're going to make some money. You're going to buy your own clothes. And if you want other things, you're going to do that. Yeah. And so I think it was instilled in me at, at a really young age that you've got to be able to take care of yourself. You got to be able to provide for yourself. My dad's favorite saying is life isn't fair, so you better get used to it. So you got to make it what you want out of it. Yeah. And so I, I, I think that's kind of a big part of um, my background. And in fact, I, I, I was a crappy student in high school and got to the point where I was like, what the hell do I want to do with my life? And I got a solid, I think it was a C minus average in high school that doesn't get into many colleges, but you can sure go down to the local community college, which is what I did. And that's where I really kind of said, I, 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 I got to get my act together. I got to figure out what I want to do. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, except I need to get an education and get it figured out. So I spent a couple of years at community college and transferred. And I went and got a degree in uh, education um, or Christian education, but it's mainly education with a you know Christian background. And it was funny because it was my senior year in college and my professor said, well, you really suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you really don't have a whole lot of patience, you know? 
And I, I was actually did my student teaching in middle school. How the hell I got there and how the hell that got assigned to me. It was absolutely the worst. And I know it's even way worse nowadays, but oh my God, it was horrible. And my, my professor said, well, what do you, you know, what do you transfer to? And I go, transfer? I'm, I, I'm at my senior year. I'm not transferring. I'm going to graduate. Yeah. He goes, well, you're not passing this class. I go, I, oh, I got to pass this class. So we made a deal. He, he made me promise that I wouldn't go into teaching. And if I promised not to go into teaching, he would pass me so I could graduate. So we made a deal. I graduated and I determined that I wasn't going to go into teaching. So I, I got a job. I went for actually it was, you know, I worked at a surf shop all these years. And so I had someone reach out and said, hey, we want you to be a rep for our surf clothing company. And I started in the sales right away. And so I, I started out sales path and um, that's how I really got started. And it was always kind of hustling and and really hustling is kind of how it all got started for me. And what? the funny, how it really got started and how I started my first business was in my middle 20s. I worked for an ad agency in business development. I came to work on a Friday. The doors were padlocked. The office was emptied out. It was payday. And I was looking at the other handful of employees and we're like, oh, crap. What are we doing? And I mean, we were out of business. And yeah. I had no idea what I'm going to do. And so the very first thing, I called up a friend. I got a waiting job the very next day, waited my first night. It was horrible, but I did it. I had to do it because I had to pay rent. Yeah. And then over the weekend, I said, well, what am I going to do with these clients? I, I have all these relationships. And this is pre-Google days and had no idea what I was going to do. So I just said, I'm going to give it a shot and get it a go. And I did it. And, you know, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> right. But I, I was, you know, pleasantly, were they comfortably numb and stupid? And I just did it. Yeah. That's awesome. What, what's been one of the most impressive branding campaigns you've ever seen a company do? Uh, boy, that's a good question. Now you're making me think on my feet here. We can come uh, back. We can come back to this. We'll, we'll come okay, back do that. that. We'll, we'll come back to that. That's great. We'll, we'll circle back. Who's been kind of a hero or a role model for you in your life? You know, nowadays, I, I, I love what like Elon Musk is doing because that guy has fought the biggest odds. And if you go back to like the Tesla days, I mean, you know, you hear stories of him sleeping on the factory floors and living there for, and when they had all these production problems and, you know, it was, everybody was betting that they were going to go bankrupt and they couldn't get their act together. And I loved those against all odds pulled out of the fire and brimstone, yeah. rise out of the ashes like a phoenix and, and making stuff happen i i love that yeah you know and, and you see him with him of twitter right now too he bought twitter he is in the thick of it and it has been ugly and it's like a sausage factory you don't want to see what's behind the curtain because i'm sure it's really <laughs> ugly yes and it, it's going to be really interesting to see how that whole story unfolds and what that's going to look like and if, if, if it's going to go down in flames or is it going to rise up like a phoenix and make something out of it again uh, you know we're watching that as we speak right yeah yeah it's in real time right now so you may have answered my next question which is if you can meet anybody on the planet now and spend time with them who would it be uh on the planet you know i mean i, I I'll, it won't be on the planet but you know my dad passed away and i think that's the other kind of thing that shaped my dad passed away right right when i got out of college and so that was 30 something years ago. And uh, I had a great bond and a great relationship. And if I could spend time with anybody, I would love to spend more time with him. Yeah. It, because he really instilled with me that hard work, own it, don't cry, don't complain, suck it up, make it happen. And, but also there's the other side of him, which was the side, which is the softer side what i you know he was one of those really kind of hard old school hard guys but the last couple of years of his life and i think it was because he had deteriorating health he really um i think he really found more of himself found the softer side wanted to make uh make sure 
us kids knew how much he loved us. In fact, my uh, most fond position in my life is a handwritten note from my father about 10 pages long about how proud he was of me and how proud and he was so proud of me as a man and as a son. It was the first um, Doyle that, you know, in that side of the Doyle side, my dad's side to graduate from college. And he was incredibly proud of me. And so if, it, if there was one person I could spend time with, I would love to spend some time with him again. Yeah, that's a great answer. So what is it that's the ultimate motivator for you every day? You get up, you have things you want to do, things you want to accomplish, but what's the motivator for you? Yeah, the, the motivator for me is two, it is several things there. The one, number one motivator is how can I, you know, I've got a wife, I've got kids, I've got grandkids nowadays. How can I be a solid example to them? How can I provide for them? How can I be a great example of what it means to be a man? How can it be a great example of not only working hard, but being emotionally connected? How can I find that a good balance in life, being successful, but also being present and being there? How can I make sure I'm providing for them financially, but also enjoying life together too? And so I want to be the best I can be, and I want to be able to be a great provider. And I also want to have a great relationship and have fun and enjoy life together as well, too, with, with my wife and with my family, as well as my friends. How can I? That's one of my other initiatives. I've been super, super busy the last couple of years, and am I a good friend? So how can I step that up a little bit and be a little more present and carve out a little more time to be there for the people that I really value? Absolutely. So of all of the clients that you've had, what's been the best success story? Uh, you know, uh, I've had, I've, I've had a really good fortune of having a bunch of different ones. Um, but you know, I, we say when we do these capital raises decks, we've got, we've helped our clients raise, you know, like $5 billion. And I really, there's a couple of them that come to mind where, you know, right now I'm working for a real estate company. It's a really good friend of mine. And I just as a friend, I helped him out and helped it with this concept, what the model was. Um, we've knocked around this for the last several years. And then a couple of years ago, he's, he became a client of mine. And then just within the last six or months or so, he's he really leaned on me. He had some changes within the company he really to come in and help out as a friend, but an ally and an advisor. In the last couple of months, he's come to me and said, you're going to be a part of this team going forward. In fact, not only are you going to be a part of the team, you're going to be a partner of mine. And we're growing this thing together. And, you know, there's that was it's almost the same kind of long must type of story. And that's probably the one that I'm really, really the fondest of. And we got some really cool, exciting things we're working on right now. Where we've got a contract to buy a big piece of property. It's a real estate investment company. And then we've got another, we're trying to raise a fund right now. And. So I'm actively involved in that and we're going to make it happen. And that when you can make it happen, you could be super proud of yourself and your accomplishments together. Um, that That's when you, you take a lot of pride in, in being part of those things. So let's go back to the surf shop part of your life yeah. when you were younger. <laughs> all right. Yeah. The, yeah. the good old days. And let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into that version of you. And you could give that version of you a piece of advice based on the life you've led, the wisdom you've gained. What would you tell your young version? Yeah. Um, you know, probably a couple of things. Um, first one was I was not very confident. Um, you know, insecure teenage boy, you know how it goes. Yeah. I didn't have a whole lot of confidence. Um, I didn't really have a whole lot of direction either. Um, and so I think between having a believing in myself, having confidence, having a drive and developing a drive to achieve specific goals and objectives, if I could go back and encourage myself to do those things and be those things earlier, I, I would, I would love to do that. So of all of the things that you've done in this life, what are you the proudest of? Uh, you know, I, I actually, my, 
a couple of weeks from now, about a week and a half ago now, week from week and a half from now, um, I'm going to my daughter's college graduation. And um, my the, I have two daughters and my older daughter is the one graduating. And my older daughter chose to live with me. Her mom and I split up a long time ago and she wanted to live with me. And so I raised her, you know, from through middle school and high school. And we went and looked at college. I got her, We worked on colleges together. And so I'm, it's one of my proudest moments of having a great relationship, father daughter relationship. And actually one of my really good friends, we talk all the time and having a great relationship and really pr proud to see her achieving in life and succeeding in life is the coolest thing ever. That's a great story. Let's go to your core of who you are. Everyone has a perception of you. We have all these pockets of people, family, friends, clients, colleagues, you're in control. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Yeah, you know, uh, that's a good question. My wife and I are working on a, uh, a ser you know, we're working on these um, intimacy cards about asking these deep type of questions. And, you know, she's like, asked me, what is my, like your spirit animal? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a great question. I have no no clue, man. <laughs> and she goes, you're like an eagle. You kind of fly up there and you surveil the landscape. You're kind of, you know, and I I am very much a uh, introvert at heart. I, I, I act and I'm an accidental CEO, accidental salesman. That's not who I am at the core. I just figured out what I got to do to be able to succeed. And so I really am like that, that eagle. And how do you, how do you, take a look at the landscape and take a look at everything. And I think really, um, I was not a very good leader um, at work. I was not a great, I was not very soft. I was kind of an asshole. Let's just be, we'll call it what it was. And so how the last couple of years, I've really worked hard to be a better man, be a better leader, a better husband, a better father, a better friend. And that took me looking inwardly at myself, and what can I do to improve and grow? And I'm very soft, but I, a lot of times I don't show people the softness. So how can I develop those skill set and balance, be more balanced? And which is really interesting because I'm a Libra and I should be all balanced and I am, but I didn't show that balance. And so I've been really working hard to develop that balance in life, balance at work, balance at home and, and be more genuine and sincere and soft as well too so work hard push hard but also be soft loving and more connected i realize i understand that juxtaposition i'm october 13th so i'm a libra i get it yeah and it does it there really does take precedence over you know it without being conscious of it it's huge it's a big part of how i roll um yeah so anyone out there that wants to know more about you, your business, anything pertaining to Michael Doyle, where do they go? Yeah, you can, uh, you can go to brandiron.net, which is my company. You can connect with me on LinkedIn, Michael Doyle, or um, yeah, that's probably the, my website or LinkedIn are probably the best way to get a hold of me. I'm happy to answer any questions, whether it be about life or business or anything else. I, am, I welcome the opportunity. So since we we need to circle back around, let's just say that you've come up with the best branding campaign. <laughs> yeah. How's that? Well, yeah, you know, um, I, you know, there is ones, um, you know, you, 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 there's tra classic ones, but I love ones, you know, like the classic Nike, just do it type of stuff where it's aspirational and if you can find that balance between like that campaign that tugs at heartstrings, but also performs well, and, you know, and that people, that really campaign, I mean, it's still years, 20, 30 years, whatever it's been, it's been a long time now. And that grabs people emotionally, but compels them and connects with them emotionally as well as intelligently and, and, uh, and compels people to take action. Those are the, some of the best ones out there. And I think that's what, if we do our things well, not only as a company, but individuals, we connect emotionally and bring in that balance type of thing. And I think that's what really works well for brands is connecting emotionally 
and compelling people to take action and 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 either buy a product or buy a service. And if you could compel them and connect with them, and really that's how you create what we call great brand champions or great brand advocates is having that emotional connection and people who are really inspired by what you do. You know, I heard a story about the Dans from the 88 Calgary Olympics. Remember the Battle of the Dans? Yeah. And one of them didn't make it and one of them made it, but they made it work. That listening to that story was like making me stress that. I'm like, man, is he going to make it? And he didn't make it magnanimous fashion. So they're like, what what are we going to do? Reebok scrambled and they made it work. But it, it's fascinating how that was happening in real time. And they just were sure that both of those guys were going to the Olympics and they were going to be neck to neck. But what they did is they created all this ancillary competition and karma <laughs> that just sank the boat, you know, so. Yeah, and, I, and it, you've got to applaud them for trying to connect emotionally, which they yeah. did. But yeah. then you talk about having to pivot and think on uh, your feet and say, oh, crap, what do we do now? <laughs> right. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, those are some of the best stories. And if you can pull that off successfully yeah, and, you know, say, OK, well, how are we going to pivot? And, and we've got to do that in life. Right. We've got to do that in business. We've got to do in life. Nothing ever goes per plan. No. Actually, I was talking to a, a, one of my clients he's becoming a, a friend. I really, really enjoy this guy last night. And I, I really just spent time with him. We had a meeting, business meeting. And then we went and grabbed some tacos and had it had a drink and and we were talking about that and he goes you know life doesn't go per plan business doesn't go plan and what makes successful people successful businesses what do you do with these challenges mm -hmm. how do you adapt how do you pivot how do you you know adapt to change and adapt to different circumstances and that what's that ability to adapt, think on your feet and modify and adjust because nothing's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Right. And there's no perfect plan because never, nothing ever goes per plan yeah. or at least hundred percent per plan. Right. 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 And so what makes us successful personally and professionally is, is how nimble are we feet on our, on our feet? How nimble are we to be able to put together an action plan, implement it quickly and adjust accordingly to be able to make things happen personally or professionally? Absolutely. So I got to tell you, I was kind of dreaming, getting into that dream mode when you were talking about California, because when we left Pine, <laughs> we went to San Diego. So we we got to live in that California dream for a while, which is so much fun. I mean, coming from the Midwest, we're landlocked. We don't see anything. When I see mountains or the ocean, it just it, it blows my brain. I'm just like, oh, my yeah. God, look at this. It's great. So it's, it is it's great. Yeah, so it is awesome. Yeah, for sure. Michael, this has been great, man. Thank you for opening up. Send my best to the mountains and, and good luck with everything. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Have a great day. Hey, thank you. Take care.